counted the M&Ms. I opened it up and counted them, and there are 55 M&Ms in here. Is this enough? If I divide these up, how many will each of you get? All 22 of you. This videotape is the third in a series showing teachers encouraging children to reinvent arithmetic. The first tape entitled Double Column Addition, A Teacher Uses Piaget's Theory, showed second graders at the beginning of the school year and in February. The tape you are about to see was made in May. You will first see Linda Joseph's second grade class and Sally Jones's third grade class will be presented later. The second graders will not engage in multi-digit division, but you will see them inventing the logic of division when the teacher asks them if there are enough crackers for everybody to get two, then three. I brought some crackers today. I want you to tell me how many is in the box. Oh, you get mm -hmm. Okay, I've already opened it up and I have 11 in one package. So there are three packages in here. So can anyone tell me how many I have in all? Uh, David? Uh, I think it's 44. This is for me! Right. Uh, David, why do you think there's 44? Well, because if you take 11 once, there, if you add 11 to another 11, that's 22. And add 22, no, that's another 22. And, uh, so, but there's only three. There's only four. three packages. Not, not four. four. If there was three four, there would be 44. 44. What do you think, David? 30. I think that's right. You think that's right? All right. Do oh, I have right. enough in this package for everybody to have one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I happen to have two boxes. <laughs> How many crackers do I have in two boxes? Oh, this is 33. Yeah. 33.
two, the three ones, and that made three. So that's um, 33, and then I did 33 again, and that 33 plus 33. I disagree with something you said about. What was that? He said 11. Three elevens. He was supposed to say three tens. Three. Yeah. You probably noticed that the teacher did not reinforce right answers or correct wrong ones. And instead, she encouraged children to agree or disagree among themselves. My question is, do I have enough crackers in these two boxes for every one of you to have two each? Yes. 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 How do you know? Lindsay? We have 133. Oh! There's 22 people in our class are 32. And then you have another 33. And then, um, that's just the same as the last one. And then you still have some extras left. <coughs> Katie? Um, there's 22 people in our class. And so, so 22 plus 22 equals 44, and we have more than 44. For, so we have, so we have some extras. Even, so there's 22 extra. Take. It is enough for three. Yeah. There, we have that enough for three. That was my next question. Do I have enough for three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just got the second graders thus used addition to know if there were enough for everybody to have two, then three. We will now go on to a problem that third graders tackled a few days later in Sally Jones's class. Okay, if we have 275 M&Ms then from those five small bags, suppose you decide that you want to share them equally among yourselves, and that's 20 of you. How many would each of you get out of this 275? This kind of problem is usually introduced in fourth grade as a set of rules for children to follow. With this problem, children are told to decide how many times 20 goes into 27, then to multiply, then to subtract, then to bring down the five, and so on. The theory of Jean Piaget called constructivism shows, however, that children acquire logical mathematical knowledge not by internalizing such rules from the environment, but by creating relationships from the inside through their own natural ability to think. On the basis of this theory, we have been developing a primary math program in which we don't teach any rules, but instead encourage children to invent their own procedures. This program has been described in two books entitled Young Children Reinvent Arithmetic and Young Children Continue to Reinvent Arithmetic, Second Grade. It is important to give children plenty of time to think and to exchange ideas with other children. The teacher actually waited 10 minutes before asking for volunteers to come to the board. The two children who went to the board proceeded essentially by addition to see how many groups of 20 they could make until they reached the total of 275. Okay, Stephen, would you show us how you got your answer? Okay. Speak loudly so that we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, 20 plus 20 is 40. 20 plus 20 is 40. 
addition, but Jason used multiplication and addition. Let us go on to a similar problem. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, we've talked about the small bag of M&Ms, but we haven't gotten to the medium bag. But I bought another medium bag, and I counted them. And I got 258, which is what we got yesterday, wasn't it? Isn't that the same? So it's just a small bag that had the different number. But now let's talk about that bag with 258 M&Ms in it. And Ms. Humphreys and I want in on this one. If we divide those up between the 22 of us, that's you plus the two of us, how many would we get then? We will skip some time and see what two children did. The teacher actually allotted 10 minutes for the children to solve the problem and to exchange ideas. All right. Katie, I would like for you to show the class how you got yours first. 22 times of 10. Speak loudly so that the whole class can hear me. 22 times 10 is 220. That's 10 of the M's for the class. And um, M is just in the top piece. And then plus. Okay, tell the class why you circle that 10. I don't think they heard you. Because that's 20, 10 in the M's class. Do you agree so far with what she's done yeah. in her computation? Yeah. Okay. okay. 220 plus 22, that's one m M&M, an extra one m M&M for another m M&M for the class. That's two plus two, then one plus ten is eleven. That's eleven m M&Ms. 
Are you in agreement with her so far? Yeah. Are you following what she's doing? Yeah. Okay, y'all let her know if you're not. We couldn't add 22 for the class to have another <coughs> one in because it would be over 258. <coughs> what? Okay, so we have to find our remainder. The remainder, um, okay, we have to say 242 plus what is 258? And two plus six is eight, and four plus ten is fifty. And zero, two hundred plus zero is two hundred. So this is our remainder, is six tenths. Remainder, remainder of sixteen, and the class gets eleven in I agree. Ellen. Ellen, you're going to have to try really hard to talk loud. Well, 22 plus 22 is 44. And 44 plus 44 is 88. Ellen continued to add 44 several times until she reached 242. Katie, on the other hand, multiplied 22 by 10 as Jason did. This procedure came very close to the standard algorithm. Katie said in essence that 10 times 22 was 220 and one more 22 made 242, or 11 22s. However, all four children approached division very differently from the standard algorithm. First, they all worked up by addition and multiplication and never used subtraction. Katie even invented a way of getting the remainder by writing 242 plus what is 258. The second difference from the standard algorithm is that all the children kept 258 intact as a whole number instead of cutting it up into 25 and 8. It may seem more efficient to teach the algorithm but when we ask traditionally instructed fourth graders why they work from left to right in division, but not in addition, subtraction, and multiplication, they always say they don't know why, but are following the rules given by the teacher. Such blind obedience is the opposite of critical thinking. Children will understand the rules much better if they are allowed to construct the knowledge they need to make sense of the algorithm. Do oh, I have yeah. enough in this package for everybody to have one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's three packages and ten threes is thirty and you have three ones and that's thirty-three. What do you think, David? Thirty and I think that's right. You think that's right. All right. 